usually have an intro, but uh, fuck that shit this time. Real heads, if they know, you're synonymous with the city, but New York is where it began. Yeah, man, I was actually born in New York. You can say New York is the place where it actually started. <laughs> I was born in New York, and I was pretty much raised between New York and Detroit. So, you know, my um, grandmother and my whole, like, um, rest of my family base and my mother's uh, side of the family was in New York, in Amityville. I mean, I just caught the hip hop bug like anybody else, you know, growing up in New York and um, just being a fan of hip hop. And it was a lot of people, you know, that were um, out back in the day, you know, a lot of people with a lot of originality. It was a lot of stuff to choose from. And, you know, just like any other kid that uh, got the hip hop bug, I was inspired to, um, you know, just pursue a hip hop career or just get more off into it. You know what I mean? So. That's that's what started it. Just growing up in New York and listening to the um, the earlier uh, hip hop artists that were coming out and stuff like that. Growing up in Detroit, you got to realize that Barry Gordy had left the city, you know, like years before I was even thinking about music, you know. So there was no music scene. You know, Hitsville, USA was actually just a museum full of old Motown artifacts, you know, that was collecting dust for the last, I don't know how many years, you know. What actually just got me into it is just, you know, like I say, being a kid wanting to express myself in a different way. And um, I, I, I liked a lot of different kind of music. You know, it wasn't just hip hop. It was rock and roll. It was jazz. It was, you know, anything I can get my hands on. And um I would listen to it and I would just be inspired by it. So, I mean, it started to take, um, I wasn't, I wasn't even fresh, if you if you ask me, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I was a <laughs> whack rapper, you know, not whack, but I was just getting myself together, you know? I didn't really know too much about the game or none of that stuff, you know? And I just had an older brother, which is Dead Boy, a.k.a. James Smith, and he would just tell me stuff. He was like, man, you know, you can't be like Run DMC, you can't be like LL Cool J or any of those people. Like, you can like their music, you know, but you got you to gotta do something different. You got to be you. You got to find your own niche. And um, it took me some years, you know what I'm saying, to actually hone in on something that would, would uh, later become my niche, you know. And that just, you know, um, was, um, like I say, Boomer Words From Hell was my first album that I actually recorded. I just got inspired by people like Prince, you know, and um, people like Ozzy Osbourne and, you know, ACDC. Like the reason I say Prince is because, you know, Prince had this thing about him that people used to, you know, his mystique. And there used to be all these crazy rumors about Prince back in the day. And, you know, it, it just, you know, fascinated me that pr people just misunderstood Prince to the point where they would start all kinds of rumors about Prince and just all this crazy stuff. So I was fascinated, you know, by that part of his career that, you know, he was able to capture people's um, attention like that, you know. So um, when I started making records, you know, I, I, I would just try to figure out ways where I can, you know, be different and capture people's attention in a way that wasn't being done at the time. Um, later down the line, you know, we coined it as acid rap, the wicked shit, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, there, there was all type of music out back, back in those days, you know, I mean, in the beginning, if you really want to take it back to the East coast, when the East coast and what I mean by the East coast, New York rap, hip hop, boom, bap, you know, in the early eighties, you know, they, they, they had, um, we like to call it like, you know, um, it's almost like um, a championship ring or, you know, um, you know, football, super, super bowl championship. They had what we would call like the ring, you know, and they held it down for many years. It was really hard to break into the New York market. If you were an artist, you know, you basically had to be from New York or knew somebody. And they kept that whole thing really like closed in and you couldn't really get in New York, you know. So this is like the early stages of hip hop, though, you know. 
it, it was born in New York. So of course it would grow up in New York. It was a baby and you know, it, 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 it was born in New York. So it was growing up in New York and I'm talking about hip hop. The people that was in control of hip hop, they kind of like monopolized it and kept it to themselves over there. And, but hip hop, like anything else that's good would seep out. Then it started to make its way across the country and in other parts of the United States and eventually the world. Six in the morning, police at my door. Fresh to be the squeak across my bathroom floor. Out my back window, I make my escape. Didn't even get a chance to grab my old school tape. Mad with no music, but happy cause free. And the street to a player is the place to be. Got a knot in my pocket, weighing least the grand. Gold on my neck, my pistol's close in hand. You know, so after the East Coast had the ring, the West Coast got it. I'm a self-made monster of the city streets Remotely controlled by hard hip-hop beats But just living in the city is a serious task Didn't know what the cops wanted, didn't have time to ask And the West Coast held it down with this thing called gangster rap It was new, nobody even knew what the hell this was You know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of people talking about reality rap And fuck the police And just growing up in the hood In Los Angeles and they were being like reporters, you know, and this was a, a time when hip hop's voice was very strong and powerful. So you know, Detroit wasn't even, a, a, you know, a thought at that point. You know what I'm saying? So you had the East right. Coast, then you had the West Coast. And, you know, th it was so hard for everybody to kind of like make money and make their way in it. I could understand why they would hoard it and kind of like, you know, try to keep it to themselves and didn't want anybody else to be a part of it or be a part of that region. When, when that, when the West coast, you know, when, when their rain start to die down a place, you know, the South got it, you know, that's when all those Southern rappers started to get record deals and they started to get acknowledged in hip hop. Cause for a long time, they had to sit out of the game. Like they, they felt some kind of way. They felt like people were looking at them like they were country bumpkins and like nobody understood them. So they finally got into the hip hop game with a couple of artists that got major deals and got some placement to get the ball rolling down there. If you see where I'm going with this. So you had the East Coast, you had the West Coast, and then you had the South with the ball, right? Right. Where, I, where we come from, the North, you know, in Detroit, you know, we never really got the ball. I mean, you can say um, with people like Eminem with his success that Detroit had the ball, but no, he didn't because when Eminem actually blew up, he kind of came in with the West Coast and Dr. Dre and all of those people. So he, his success was not really the success of the region, if you understand what I'm saying. He got success from being affiliated with a major conglomerate and people like Dr. Dre and that whole coast. And it wasn't a win for the the area where we come from, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, we still had to fight and claw our way to the top to um, get recognized or whatever, whatnot. And we still do have to do that right now because we don't have the ball. You know, there's a lot of people looking at Detroit like the eyes of the world are on Detroit right now, but we don't have the ball, you know. But what we do have is a sound, and I will tell you about that sound. The spirit of Detroit, the sound of Detroit is the wicked shit. Now, I'll tell you like this. When New York had the ball and then the West Coast had the ball and then the South had the ball, right? I've watched everybody in this game go from the golden age of hip hop to reality rap to Southern party rap to spitting the wicked shit. You can't even really sell a record without spitting the wicked shit now. And what I mean by that is 
the imagery and the things that you're talking about, like the dark imagery and stuff like that. That is all acid rap. That is the wicked shit. That is expressing yourself in a creative way and not a violent way. This is the thing that I incorporated into the rap game and put there for people. I say, hey, look, you can express yourself any kind of way you want to. You know what I'm saying? Be real. Be be free to express yourself in any way you choose to creatively. And that's what I feel like I brought to the game. And that's what I feel like the sound of Detroit is. And that's where you get to the eyes of the world being on Detroit today. But we don't have the ball as a collective, if you understand what I'm saying. The pipe, my shit is so I know my shit's fatter than Luther Vandross Psychic connection wanna hit me with the Holy Ghost Overdose, diagnose, niggas in the comatose Once I fuck, fuck ya, nigga motherfuck ya Voodoo, wicked child born a bastard Visions of bloody bodies being blasted Thinking of excuses, voices in my head Mental abuses to lose my mind on a flash line Refuses to answer, to confess shit to your question Me and myself versus Smith and Wesson Cause the wicked shit'll never die. Detroit, I'll paint you a picture, but the picture I paint will be beautiful. Detroit is a beautiful city, man. I mean, Detroit has its fair share of problems. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not trying to discredit Eminem or Marshall or anything like that. I mean, 8 Mile was a great movie. It was a great, you know, it was like science fiction. You know, it was a made up story about a rapper from Detroit. It wasn't his life story and it wasn't about the the culture of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So it was a great movie. It had great success and and kudos to him for that. But it it wasn't a you know a honest uh look at Detroit and the culture that or the music scene. It was like a, a made up story like Beat Street or something. Beat Street is not the end all be all to what hip hop is in New York. You know what I'm saying? Or the movie Breaking. If you seen Breaking, it has nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? Like the culture of hip hop, you know. But anyway, Detroit is a beautiful place, man. I grew up in Detroit right before crack came in. So I got to see the city when it was extra beautiful before, you know, um, the termites came in. It's like a bunch of termites got loose and it just started to rot from the inside and until it, you know, imploded. But it's coming back now. You know, I mean, if you go to Detroit and you might not understand it, it's like going somewhere and, you know, it's all it's all about what you see. You know, you can look for the, the, the negative stuff in it or you can choose to see the positive stuff in it or the beauty in it. I don't know, man. It's hard. You know, I would I would I would want to be um, recognized for my contributions and music and stuff like that. But I, I couldn't tell you why. Um, why things are the way they are, man. You could only ask those other people. I couldn't tell you why um, Marshall's name starts with an M, but he spells it with an E and ends his shit with an M. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't tell you that. I couldn't tell you why all this stuff is happening like this, man. I'm cool with Trick Trick, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Trick Trick gave me a call and he said he had a track. And, you know, at the time, Proof was still alive and stuff. And, you know, Trick Trick was like, man, you know, y'all need to work all this stuff out. So, you know, Trick Trick, you know, played a part in me and Proof even um squashing our disagreement. Don't be an eyewitness if I'm not mistaken. Just listen, niggas cooking in the kitchen. A murder was committed. I was fit in the description. A Detroit nigga scared. Listen, I'm an assassin. Trick Trick ain't got to hit him. I already blast him. My name is P. And, you know, the, the things we were disagreeing about was just silly. Um, It was childish stuff, you know. But, you know, at the time, we both, you know, felt strongly about our views about hip hop and, you know, what was at stake in Detroit and what was being ga- given up to certain, um, you know, causes and individuals that were not, you know, for the culture, man. And, not, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? That's what we were fighting about. That's the thing about it. People think you forget about the whole shit that they do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just everything on the city. Like, Detroit is a hard place. Like, you know, you, it's a hard place to get respect from, man. So if you do some bullshit out there in Detroit, they're going to call you on it. Man, you got to realize everybody that came across in contact with the wicked shit wanted some of it. This I didn't just make a record, man. I made a genre. 
Do you understand like what that is? That's like somebody coming in and making a new rock and roll. And now it's not called rock and roll no more. It's called the wicked shit, right? So of course you're going to want to do what I'm doing. Of course. I am flattered by all those guys that do that, man. You know, even when they say, oh, man, I, I do it better than him. Okay, whatever. You know, but that's not the point, man. You you just, I'm, I'm flattered and I did this so you could make some money and so you could, you know, find your way out here, man. You know, I'm just here to show you the way, man, and show you the way to the light, man. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I just happened to be doing the wicked shit. And I got threw off with that bullshit and that's house shoes shit. And no offense. And I ain't got nothing against house shoes. I don't want people to listen to this and think that. You know, this was just all about that Jay Dilla shit. And he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. People be out here faking like they DJs. You know, like, I don't know. If you don't got two turntables and, and you just got some CDRs, are you really a DJ? But you got certain people in this game that are straight up, you know, baller block you or, you know, intentionally do something to block, you know, your lane. You know what I mean? And them the people I'm talking about, them the people that just need to get out the way. That's not doing nothing for the city and ain't doing shit, man. That's, you know, just in the fucking way. If you're an artist or a DJ, come up off your own shit. Come up off your own name. I this the, the way people do shit nowadays is just whack. You know, everybody got to be, oh, yeah, that's such and such little son. Or, you know, that's them, them people like make your own fucking name. You know what I'm saying? And when, when somebody say your name, make sure they just saying your fucking name. Don't attach your name to, you know, one of our brothers that we fucking love and hold dearly. We're not going to hold you to with that same respect. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's just what I'm saying. When originality meant something, when coming up off your own merit meant something. You know, that's where I come from. Like, I just, I can't get off in the people that just want to come up off somebody, man, without doing no work. And just, you know, you don't want to pay no dues, but you just, you know, you want to be right there. You know, and this it's, it's, it's crazy to me, man. A lot of people dislike me for just shedding some light on the situation man, about that guy, you know, because he's everybody's favorite favorite you know what i mean like he reached a level of success that people will sell out their mama trying to get next to him he got people sitting around him right now that a lie till they die they mama say don't fuck with him they gonna fuck with him anyway because they think that he could do something for them and that's the evils of this game if somebody think that you could do something for them or that they could get something from you it they just go to no there's there's no limit to what they'll do and it's just like that's how evil this game is for people that don't know nothing about it record stores do not push you they're not in the business to push you they just sell your records record time was a popular record store you understand what i'm saying just like harmony house was just like uh fucking music land was there was many popular record stores record time yes was one of them if you had your records in record time hey some kids might have knew where to pick them up at. And the guy that ran that store was a real cool guy. You know, like most of the people in business and the record stores in, in Michigan, those were good friends of ours. You know, like we watched the whole bottom of the, the record business fall out with the Internet and all that stuff. A lot of families lost their business. I lost, watched a lot of good friends go out of business, you know, when the change happened. The music business has changed tremendously. And it, it's still teaching people like lessons, like life lessons. And I hate the word legend because people misuse that word. They throw that word around like so loosely. And I, I just feel like I got one leg in, you know, L-E-G-E-N-D. I don't feel like I'm a legend, man, because I don't know if people respect that. Right. Okay. And you never hear me. You never hear me saying yeah. that. You know, I, I don't say that. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. You know, like a lot of people say that shit. Like, oh, he's a legend. Was, what the fuck does that mean? You know, Michael Jackson's a legend. Prince is a legend to me. You know what I'm saying? I never met them, but th they're legends to me. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I don't know. I'm, ju I'm just a person, man. You know what I'm saying? That just keep trying. I got a, a suicidal drive to do shit. You feel what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, sometimes I get stuck on some bullshit, man. Like, you know, like I say, you know, like I haven't been the, the easiest person to deal with. You know, I, I get up in my feelings and shit. And um, 
you know, this whole industry, man, just not being accepted by my peers. Like, I don't know, no famous people outside of maybe Ice-T and ICP that have publicly said, yo, he is the shit. Like, I like his music. But I would see, you know, stuff from, you know, I would see my influence in other people's work. But they won't publicly acknowledge me. And that, that shit gets to me a little bit sometimes. I don't even like to call myself a rapper, man. I'm an artist, man. People do not respect rappers, man. You say you a rapper, you might as well be, say, hey, I sell kilos. That's how they look at you. If you say you a rapper. People do not respect that shit. People need to look at me like they look at fucking Bob Dylan. Like they look at Prince or Michael Jackson. Don't look at me like I'm Eminem. I'm not a fucking rapper. Because I feel like my music, I, I'm putting a lot into that shit, man. I'm not just making jibber jabber. People call you a rapper, man. It's almost disrespectful, man. You know, but I'm glad hip hop came because hip hop has brought a lot of people together that it probably wouldn't have brought together. It showed a lot of people how to have rhythm. It put bass into country music and rock and roll. And, you know, you're welcome. You know, all those genres, you know, that didn't know how the shit went. They didn't have a clue to the formula. Now everybody has a clue to the formula, and that's what hip hop did. Hip hop won the war, y'all. On some real shit, it won the war. And they know it did. That's why I don't, I sit back and I'm happy, you know, for hip hop, for winning the revolution, man. Hip hop won the fucking revolution all around the world. People just don't want to fucking admit to it. You know, I'm all in it. I mean, as an artist, my head is um, always in a great space. You know, I don't have um, regrets or stuff like that. There's things that um, I wish I would have did, like, um, Anytime somebody says something negative about my music, like call me a devil worshiper or said, yo, Esham's the leader of the Illuminati or just, you know, whatever. Uh, he's the commander in chief of the rock and roll army. No, that one's true. <laughs> but anytime they said anything negative about me, I should have corrected them. You know, I, ne I just never did. I just would let any crazy rumor fly. I just let people say whatever they say, because I was like, well, any press is good press until it created this. um I don't even know what to call it. It's this thing that's on me that is it's bigger than me. My shadow is bigger than my person. You know what I'm saying? What's your pleasure, mister? What's your pleasure, mister? What's your pleasure, mister? What's your pleasure, mister? I wish they, there was more people in hip hop actually like proof that could bring more people together in hip hop. You got all these people that, you know, get famous and go and, and run and hide behind closed doors, man. And I don't think that's not what hip hop is about, man. You know, hip hop is out in the street. Hip hop is, you know, it's not scared of nothing, man. Hip hop is out there, man. And a lot of people get famous and get rich off of hip hop and forget what it's like to be that struggling artist going in that club, playing for those 10 people or, you know, you can never forget what that feel like. And you can never, you know, to me, turn your back on that. And not if you're a true artist and you know what I'm saying? And if you love the music, you know, cause that's really what it's all about for me, the music. I'm just here for the music and the entertainment, entertaining purposes. You know, I try to put a message in there every now and then for people, but you know, for the most part, I'm just trying to entertain people and I hope people get something out of it, you know, on my, my time on this planet, man. I just I don't I just don't want to come across like as a as a bitter person, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not bitter and you know, and I don't want to come across as the Victoria's Secret guy, like, you know, wanting to jump off a bridge or whatever, what whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Cause I I definitely don't want to do that, man. I'm 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 very privileged, you know what I'm saying? I got a, a good view of it, man. And I don't know if I got to see it so I could tell somebody, hey, it ain't so bad. But, you know, maybe um, somebody sh the way I got to see it was, you know, just I feel like I, I've, I'm, I've been learning more than, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm learning like it's constant. I'm learning every day. So all this time I've been learning. So even if, you know, 
My records are not fucking 10 million diamond platinum or whatever, whatnot. I've always been learning every day. I'm just a student to the game and I'm learning and learning and learning. So, you know, that's what I like to do is just learn and, you know, hopefully be able to share that knowledge with people.